you have your Bible this morning, turn with me to Psalm 119, and I want us to read together, beginning in verse 25 and reading down through verse 32. Psalm 119, beginning in verse 25 and reading down through verse 32. And if you're able and willing to stand, would you please stand in honor of the public reading of God's Word. Psalm 119, beginning in verse 25. And this is what the word of the Lord says. My soul clings to the dust. Give me life according to your word. When I told of my ways, you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous works. My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Put false ways far from me and graciously teach me your law. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I set your rules before me. I cling to your testimonies, O Lord. Let me not be put to shame. I will run in the way of your commandments when you enlarge my heart. Father, as we come to your word, would you break it before us? And feed it with, feed it to us, nourish us with the word of the Lord. Father, we're often like the psalmist. We're brought low. We're discouraged. We're downhearted. Lord, the things of life cause us to endure suffering and sorrow, sometimes so great that we find our faces are in the dust and we wonder how we can go on. It is in those days that we turn to the word of the Lord and we find life. So God, teach us how your word can minister to us and let us be a people who seek the face of God in the truth of your word. We pray it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. You may be seated. We're walking through Psalm 119, and if you haven't been with us, let me just bring you up to speed on how the psalm is structured. Psalm 119 is an acrostic psalm. That means that uh, it is built around a, a certain structure, and the structure is the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. And so each section of the psalm is centered on a Hebrew letter, and that's why you have divisions that are headed by the Hebrew letter. Our passage today is headed by the Hebrew letter Daleth. And so every verse in Psalm 119, 25 to 32, begins with a word that begins with the letter Daleth and so forth throughout the whole psalm. Next week, it'll be the Hebrew word hey, or Hebrew letter hey. And as we walk through the psalm, we see that each of the sections is eight verses long, and that's probably the psalmist's nod to the fact that he uses eight different words to refer to the law of the Lord or the teachings or the commandments of God. And what Psalm 119 is, is a personal reflection upon the brilliance of the law of the Lord and the way that it both encourages us and corrects us and instructs us in our walk with the Lord. And so you may look at Psalm 119 and say, listen, this is rather repetitive, isn't it all just uh, saying that God's word matters to us? But I think as we walk through this, you'll see that the psalmist invites us on a journey in his own life and heart, one that we all take as we walk in faith in Jesus Christ, where we have ups and downs, highs and lows, and where we need the word of the Lord to minister to us. The title that I chose for this morning probably brought something to your mind. If you saw those two words, I'm melting, I bet you thought about one scene in particular, didn't you? You thought about the Wicked Witch in the Wizard of Oz, that scene where, where she is uh, uh, forced to face her demise as, uh, as Dorothy and, and her pals, they take water and they throw it on her, and what happens? She begins to crumble before them, and she's says, I'm melting, melting. Well, not because any water's thrown on us or because we're wicked witches, but there are times in our lives when we feel like we're melting, when we feel like our soul is going to give way, 
when the stuff of life, sorrow and suffering, hardship, comes so intensely. We just don't know if we can carry on. There are days like the life of the psalmist when, when our faces seem to be in the dust. And it's in those days that we find ourselves wondering, Lord, how do we go on? How do we continue to abide in you? How do we trust in you? How do we find a strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow? And of course, the answer, dear one, is to come back to the word of the Lord. See, the thing that distinguishes Christian people from the peoples of the earth is not the fact that we go through sorrow and suffering. Everybody goes through sorrow and suffering. The people who believe in false gods and the people who believe in no God at all all go through similar suffering to what you and I endure. We all lose people we love. We all walk through financial challenges. We all have those days when we break our relationships with people through harsh words said in a fit of rage. We all have those times when we can't seem to achieve the goals that we've set for ourselves. And in fact, though we take three steps forward, we seem to be walking six steps backwards. What distinguishes the people of God is not the fact that we walk through suffering and sorrow. What distinguishes us as belonging to the Lord is that we do not lose heart even in the middle of our trouble. But instead, we seek the face of God. We continue to abide in Him. We continue to say to the Lord, you are my portion, you are my strength, you are my strong tower, you are my righteousness, you are my glory, you, Lord, are the lifter of my head. We continue to say, where else can I turn, Lord? You have the words of eternal life. We continue to ask the question, uh, I lift my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. We are a people who are resolved in our hearts that we will not turn away from God no matter how difficult our lives get. And because of that, this morning, the psalmist in his own particular season of sorrow and suffering teaches us how the Word of God ministers to our hearts and lives in those seasons of sorrow and suffering. So I want you to see this morning in Psalm 119, verses 25 to 32, four ways that the Word of God ministers to us in seasons of sorrow and suffering. And the first one is this, that when we look at the Word of the Lord, in Psalm 119 and verse 25, we see that the Word revives us. In seasons of sorrow and suffering, the Word of the Lord revives us. Look at verse 25. The psalmist says, My soul clings to the dust. Give me life according to your word. Remember that we've said before, we don't know the exact nature of the psalmist's trouble. What we do know is that it seems to be on account of his faith in God. What we do know is that there are people who are oppressing him, people who are persecuting him on account of his faith. And what we do know now as we come to verse 25 is that this trouble and this trial has become so great in the life of the psalmist that he is laid low. Now maybe you're a person of incredible will. You've got a strong constitution. And so you look at a verse like this and you say, ha, that's a weakling. There's some among us who might say that. There are some among us who would say, I I don't ever have these days of doubt. I don't ever have these days of trouble. I've got a strong confidence in the Lord. I'm not weak like that psalmist. Well, I'm so glad for you, but the rest of us walk through some difficult days, okay? And I might just tell you, dear one, if you've not ever been in the place where your face has hit the dust, be careful. It'll come. See, it's the nature of walking through life in a broken and fallen world. We are forced to face the frailty of our lives. And there are days when trials come to us, not necessarily because we've done anything to warrant them, but because we live in a world marred by sin. And when those trials come, sometimes we find ourselves like the psalmist saying, listen, my life is in the dust. It can't get any worse. It can't get any lower. 
I'm at this point, I don't have any strength to carry on. I don't know where I'm going to find life again. The psalmist is give out. The psalmist has come to this place and says, I've done all I can do. I've tried all the things I know to try. I, I, I've fought all the days that I can. I've, I've confided in, in all the wise counselors that I have. I, I've gone to the Word and I've sought the, the trust and the companionship of God in my life. But I'm just telling you, my trouble and my trial, my sorrow and my suffering is so great in my life that I'm now in this place where my life is in the pit you ever been there maybe not on a public stage but but do you know what it's like to walk in the back door and close the door behind you and lock yourself in from all the people in your life and breathe out that sigh of relief that you got through one more day because you weren't sure you were going to do you know what it's like to live with that cloud of grief hanging over your head? You've lost so much in your life, you're just waiting for the next lot to fall. And you're just sure that the phone call or the text message is going to bring bad news. And when it doesn't, you breathe out that sigh of relief because you were sure it was going to be doom. Do you know what it's like to have that one day of success in the midst of lots of days of failure and you find yourself looking around going really did this happen to me i don't even know how to process success because i've had such trouble in my life i don't even know how to be happy about something because i've been sad for so long do you know what it's like to have your face in the dust brothers and sisters i'm, I'm here telling you we're all there at some point if you hadn't been there, you're going to be there. If you've been there and you just got out of it, I'm happy for you. If you hadn't been there in a while, it's probably coming, I mean, but it happens. It runs in our lives. Things happen that bring us low. And the question for us as the people of God is not, will we face sorrow and suffering? The question is, how will we face sorrow and suffering? And the word of the Lord calls us to recognize that in the midst of great sorrow and suffering, the word of God is there to revive us. It's there to breathe new life into us. It's there to say when we're down and out, when we're discouraged beyond compare, when we find that we don't have strength to carry on, it's there to lift us up. The psalmist says in Psalm 119 and 25, my soul clings to the dust. That is, I'm down in the dirt. I don't know how to carry on. My life's as low as it can get. You might as well dig the grave around me. But he says this, God, I'm pleading with you. Give me life. How? According to your word. Sometimes in our lives when we come to those places of great sorrow, great trouble, great trial, we find ourselves looking around at all the things the world has to offer in order to buck us up. Uh, we want to go to the doctor and get an upper and then we get so up we need a downer. We, we go to our friends and we say, I, I, I need to talk to somebody and we spend hours and hours and hours trying to get these things out of our hearts so that we might just be able to breathe again. And we, we go to our boss and say, if I could just have enough time off of work, I think I could get past this difficult season in my life but the reality is for the people of God we are called not to look without but to look within the word of the Lord to find life see God's word revives us when we've gone through suffering and sorrow the word is there dear one to lift you up what are some of the things that we face in our lives that might have us looking, looking for the revival of God's Word. Well, sometimes we go through emotional distress. Sometimes in our lives we go through emotional distress. We, uh, we find ourselves in broken fellowship with others. We, we find ourselves at odds with people that we love. We, we find ourselves losing people that we love. And we, we have those days in our lives when we are emotionally distressed. And the Word of God is there to revive us. Psalm 43 and 5 says this, Why are you cast down on my soul? 
And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God. I shall again praise Him, my salvation. And my God, there's that time in my life when, I, when I'm not sure I can carry on. I go through that emotional distress, but then I come to the Word of God, and the Word of God has an answer for me. The Word of God is there to tell me there will be better days ahead. There will be a time of joy ahead. There will be a day when you overcome. There will be a time when you're not so low. There will be a time when you're close to God again. I keep on hoping in the Lord. Sometimes we find ourselves in need of a revival because we are socially distanced. Now, that phrase might not have meant anything to us a couple of years ago, right? That means a whole lot more to us now. It's sort of like we talk about putting on a mask, and you know, we may mean spiritual masks, but we all know what these physical masks are like. But there are times in our lives when we're socially distanced, not because of a pandemic, but just because of our circumstances. Times in our lives when we're far from, far from home, far from the people we love. Oh, we have people around us. We see people at the grocery store and in the line at the tellers at the bank. and We have the people we work around, but... You know what it's like to be in the midst of a group of people but still feel alone. You know what it's like to be in the midst of a group of people but feel like you live in a glass bubble. You're screaming for somebody to hear you, but you're certain no one does. And you just need the reviving that only the Lord and His Word can bring to your life. Well, you come to the word of the Lord, and what does God say about that? In Psalm 139, and verse 7 through 10, He says, Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. There's God's word in times of social distancing when you feel like you're all alone. There is God's word there to remind you you're never alone because God is with you. You may not have the presence of the people you're closest to in your life. You may feel like you're separated and lonely, but there is the word of the Lord calling to you to remember that God is with you no matter where you go in your life. Reviving. Sometimes we look for revival when we're physically drained. There are days in our lives when, when the body just can't endure. There are days in our lives when we walk through surgery and we wonder, will we ever recover? There are days in our lives when we're enduring treatment and we wonder, will we even be able to make it through this? Days in our lives when we just have seen more of those birthdays than we maybe wanted to. And time starts catching up to us and we begin to experience the frailty of the body. And we wonder, Lord, how can we go on? And it's in those days that the word brings renewal and revival to us. In Isaiah 40, verses 30 and 31, the word says, Even youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I'm just telling you this morning that, that no matter what it is that's brought you low, maybe it's the, the, the physical distress, maybe it's the social distancing, maybe it's the emotional uh, distress in your life, but there are things that bring us low that cause us like the psalmist to say my face is in the dust I just can't carry on anymore I don't have any life left to live Lord I need you to revive me according to the word and I'm telling you dear one if you will open the word of God and seek a word from the Lord God's word will begin to revive your soul see the word revives but not only does the word revive the word reveals Look at verses 26 and 27. The psalmist says, When I told of my ways, you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts. And I will meditate on your wondrous works. See, the psalmist says, I've been here before. That's why we say if you just got out of a trial, you enjoy the moment, but you're probably going to go to another one. It's the way life works. The hope of our faith is that as we endure one trial, we endure it well, and we get stronger, 
and we have some principles in order to, to be more effective at enduring the next trial, right? However, some of us endure things and we don't get better, we get bitter. So just be careful when you walk through something and say, I'm going to be better for this. Well, not necessarily. It's like Gershwin said, it ain't necessarily so. You only get better if you lean into the grace of God and learn from the Lord what he's trying to teach you and put that into place in your life. So you see, the psalmist, he's come to this place again in his life. He's come to another time of testing. This is another season of sorrow and suffering. It's another time of hardship. But he tells us in verse 26, I've been here before. He says, when I told of my ways, you answered me. He says, God, I've been here before. I, I've been in this posture of prayer before. I've been in this place in my life where I was saying, Lord, my life is in the pit. I don't know how to carry on. I'm going through such difficulty and trouble in my life. I'm not sure. And God, you brought a word to me, a word of life, a word of hope, a, a word of encouragement. You renewed me. You revived me. You revealed to me a way to go forward. God, I've been down this road before. So God, here I am. I need your help again. Sometimes in our lives when we go through difficult things, when we come to seasons of sorrow and suffering, we just think, well, I'm going to get through this on my own. I don't really need God's grace at work in my life. I can handle this, and you'll handle it till you can't. And you'll come to a place where you run out of all the resources your life has to offer, and you'll be driven back to the throne of grace where the writer says we have a great high priest tempted in all points as we were, yet is without sin. Therefore, we should come boldly to the throne of grace to find mercy and help in our time of need. And what the psalmist says is when you come to a season of sorrow and suffering, God will reveal to you. And he reveals two things. Number one, he reveals his past gracious work in your life. He reveals his past gracious work in your life. The psalmist begins in 26 by saying, When I told of my way, you answered me. So the psalmist says, I've been down this road before. God's been kind, gracious, merciful, loving toward me before. He has worked in my behalf before. He says, when I come to the word of God, I'm remembering how you've acted for me in the past. Psalm 103 tells us that we should bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. In other words, the psalmist says we ought to be a people who remember how God has been gracious towards us, how God has worked for us in the past. Sometimes in our lives we begin to forget what God has done for us. We forget the trials that we've been through. We forget how God was kind and gracious to us. But then something happens. We're brought to a season of sorrow and suffering. We're caused to depend more upon the Lord. And we come to the Word of God and we begin to seek an answer from the Lord. We look for help. And what God does is he begins to reveal in his word how he's been kind and gracious to us in the past and all of a sudden where we were so focused in on our sorrow so focused in on our suffering so focused in on our trouble so focused in on our trial and we couldn't see anything else God begins to open our hearts and our eyes and we begin to see just how awesome God has been toward us in the past and where we've been down in a pit of despair we begin to live our voice in a chorus of praise to God who has it in the day of trouble in the past. So you go through a season of trial and trouble and you say, I feel all alone. I don't even know how to carry on. I don't even know the direction to look in. Why don't you just come to the Word and start thinking about, God, what have you done for me in the past? And God will begin to reveal all the ways that he's graced your life. See, he reveals his past works of grace and he reveals his present words of guidance. We come to the word, we find ourselves in need of direction, in need of guidance. And so the psalmist says in verse 27, make me understand the way of your precepts and I will meditate on your wondrous work. He says, God, I'm in this, this moment of trial. I'm in this season of sorrow. I'm not sure exactly how 
to carry on. And he says, I need guidance from you, God. I need to know how to carry on. And he says, if we'll come to the Word, if we'll ask God to teach us, if we'll ask God to show us His ways, if we'll ask God to put His precepts in front of us, God will begin to do that. You find yourself in a season of trouble and you don't know which way to go forward. Maybe it's because you've not been seeking the Lord. Maybe it's because you hadn't sought Him long enough. Maybe you think that if you just give Him two seconds of recognition at the end of a day when you find yourself in a pit of despair, that's, that'll work. But you, God wants those who seek Him with their whole heart. My friend, if you find yourself in trouble and trial, if you'll open the book and begin to seek Him fervently, if you'll make a priority of God, if you'll do what Jesus says and seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, you'll find that everything else is added to you. All of a sudden, all the things that you don't have direction on, all the things that you don't have a, a, a clear picture of, all the things you can't get the sense of will start unfolding to you and you'll get some wisdom. You seek the Lord in His Word, God will start preaching to you. You'll find a way where there was no way. See, the Word, it revives. And the Word, it reveals. And, and then I want you to see the Word, it reinforces. Look at verse 28. Psalmist says, My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your Word. Put false ways far from me. And graciously teach me your law. That word melt there, it, it means I'm weeping away. It, it means it's like I'm, I'm just drained. I, I don't have any tears left, but I'm, I'm just drained. We were, at Christmas this year, we, we had the whole family together. And uh, every now and then we like to pull out all the stops. And so uh, we, we had the dining room table set with all the china. And I was going to stop there. And we had napkins and china and tablecloth, everything. And then Mary Ray said, oh, let's get the candles out. So she goes and she gets the big candlesticks out uh, that were her grandmother's that, that got passed on to us. And, and we start getting the candles out. And we've got all the table set and all the candles. And we've got food everywhere. And, and we liked the, the candles, and we hadn't been in this thing long, and all of a sudden, we noticed those candles are just starting to, to droop a little. Because it was, it was hot. I mean, it was Christmas, but it was hot. And I thought about that this week, when I thought about how sometimes we are, we're like those candles. We just start melting under the heat of life. And what we need is for God to come along and give us some strength to reinforce us. I, I don't think they probably do this now because everybody's afraid of clowns in 2022. But in 1988, when I was born, clowns were a big thing in children's toys. Uh, we had a little clown that you used to learn how to buckle your shoes, tie shoelaces, button and zip and all those little things. And, and, and then we had another little clown that... Uh, I think he was like Bozo, and, and he was he was about you know two feet tall, and and, and it was kind of a a, a cone shaped clown that was inflatable, and, and he had some weight down in the bottom of him, and the rest was filled with air, and he was a punching bag like a punching clown, except I, I, we didn't have them back then, but he was like a weeble. Y'all know about weebles? Weebles wobble, but they. Don't fall down, right? And, and that clown was like a weeble. He, you could beat the tar out of him, and he kept getting back up. He was weighted so that he kept getting back up. And I'm telling you, God wants us to be like that clown. He wants us to be able to get the stuff in beat out of us, but keep getting back up. And you can't do that on your own. What you need is for the word of the Lord to reinforce your life. Why the psalmist says in 119 and 28, My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Put false ways far from me and graciously teach me your law. See, there's a negative and a positive there. Did you notice that? 
He says, if you want to be reinforced from the word of the Lord, you negatively need to be stripped of all the falsehood in your life. And positively, you need the teaching of the word of the Lord. See, some of us, we look at our lives, we get to a point of difficulty, a season of sorrow, a time of trouble, and what do we do? We start looking at our life going, okay, what did I do to, to merit this, right? What did I do to deserve this? And maybe we know that our tongue hadn't been as bridled as it should. Maybe we know we haven't had our priority in our giving like we ought. Uh, maybe we know we hadn't been as faithful in, in gathering with the church on Sunday. And so what we do, we, we all of a sudden begin to, to deal with the outer things. We begin to deal with the fruit. And all the fruit that's negative, we begin to trim those things off. We're going to be better. But we forget to deal with the root. And the root is the teaching. It's the faith that we hold fast in our hearts. It's the presence of the word of the Lord deep in our lives. And dear one, if all you ever do is deal with the fruit and you never deal with the root, you're not really going to change. So to be reinforced according to the word, you've got to get saturated with the word of God. Yeah, you need to deal with all of those troublesome things, all those false things, all those deceptive things, but you also need to deal and prioritize and put in your heart the things of the Word. And if you'll let the Word of God begin to reinforce your life, it doesn't mean you won't get knocked down, but you'll start getting back up a whole lot easier. See, the Word, it revives. And the Word reinforces and then I want you to see that the word, it reorients. Look at verse 30. The psalmist says, I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I set your rules before me. I cling to your testimonies, O Lord. Let me not be put to shame. I will run in the way of your commandments when you enlarge my heart. I don't know what was going on in the psalmist's life. But I know this. As the word of God begins to get into him. As he's revived by it. As it reveals to him God's word. And his, his precepts for living. As he's reinforced by the truth of the word. He begins to find direction again. The word reorients him in the middle of his trouble. It shows him the way forward. It, it says, here's the true north. Growing up, we didn't have the benefit of Siri or Alexa. We had Rand, and her last name was McNally, right? Y'all know what I'm talking about? That Rand McNally Atlas was that big... It didn't fit in the console. It didn't fit in the pocket on the back seat. You know where it fit? In my lap. That's where it fit. And my job as the co-pilot, why in the world we trust a 10-year-old to be the co-pilot, I'll never understand, but my job as the co-pilot was to open the Rand McNally and to find the way forward. Now, if you had Ronnie, like I had Ronnie as your daddy, you probably had a highlighted line on the map showing you the way we intended to go. The problem is if you don't tell him where the highlighted section goes, you may be on a side road. You may be on a road that doesn't exist on the map. And all of a sudden, you're out in the middle of a wheat field wondering how do we get back to the highway. And if you don't know north, south, east, or west, you have to find orientation on the map. You've got to know which way is up to begin finding your way. The word of the Lord helps you find which way is up. The psalmist comes to the end of this and he prays. He says, I have chosen the way of faithfulness I set your rules before me. 
I cling to your testimonies, O Lord. Let me not be put to shame. I will run in the way of your commandments when you enlarge my heart. The psalmist says, I've made a decision that the Word of God is going to be my guiding compass. It's going to be the way that I live. And when I get down in deepest, darkest sorrow, when my face is in the dust, when I don't know how to carry on, I'm not going to let the trouble of my life direct me. I'm going to let the truth of God's Word guide me. Some of you are here this day and your faces are in the dust. You don't know how to carry on. You are troubled beyond compare. And you're trying to fight in your own strength. I invite you. I encourage you to give it up because you won't make it on your own. Come back to the word of the Lord. It revives, it reveals, it reinforces, and it reorients our lives. That we might flourish to the praise and glory of his name.